QuickBooks Online 2024 print, email, and create PDF reports. Get ready and some coffee because we don't accept excuses about being too tired. Unless for some reason you've been made to physically carry two tires, then maybe it's a legitimate excuse because then you've been too tired against your will. But whatever, let's get into it. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we are not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side. Going into the favorites, right-clicking on the balance sheet report. Open link in. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. In a new tab, right click in the profit and loss report, open the link in a new tab. Go into that middle tab we just opened up, closing up the hamburger. There is our balance sheet. I'm going to do the range change, bringing it back to 2023. I don't want to go back to two. We have to go back. 010123. 12 31 2 3 run it and then we're going to the tab to the right closing up the reports and let's go back once again to 03 01 01 2 3 tab 12 31 2 3 tab run it to refresh it back to the tab to the middle where our balance sheet is this has been our point of focus we now want to think about the concept of being able to provide the reports to clients or possibly supervisors. I will primarily be thinking as though we're a bookkeeper, we're providing reports to clients. Remember that the grouping of the reports is gonna be as important oftentimes as actually getting the numbers correct because a lot of times you're dealing with people that might not be you know, accountants clearly and therefore uh, what's gonna impress them is the fact that you're communicating well with them and you're putting the reports in a format that looks nice and neat and clean that they can basically deal with. So how you're gonna be presenting or giving the reports then becomes uh, very important. Now we're only gonna be focusing in on the balance sheet right now, but the same concept would apply when we get to future reports, like for example, the income statement, of course, and any other reports that you're gonna be batching together. The question being, how often might you provide the reports to like a client, for example. You might give them a bundle, for example, at the end of the month, at the end of the quarters, at the end of the year. You might have different bundles that you make basically on month end, quarter end, and year end. Year end likely being the most important bundle because in the United States, even small businesses are gonna have to deal with the taxes at that point in time. So you wanna make sure that you've got everything you need to help them out at that time. And for the rest of the year, you're probably trying to just make them feel comfortable that you'll be there at, uh, at the tax time and ready to, ready to roll. So then how can we give the reports to people? Once we group all the reports, we could email them to them. However, the email, you gotta make sure that email is secure and you wanna make sure that, uh, that you might not want multiple attachments on the email because you might be sending 
at least five to 10 reports on a monthly basis. If you want to group your reports together, you can print them uh, and then you can give them to someone physically, but that's less and less common these days. You might be working online with people. Also noting with the email, we could zip the files as a PDF and attach them, which is a little bit cleaner than attaching 10 individual files to an email. We could export it to a PDF file, allowing us to zip it and provide it to somebody possibly, or we can put it on a cloud drive like Google Cloud and or OneDrive or something like that, or Microsoft uh, OneDrive and whatnot. So though that's a useful tool these days. That's another method that we can clearly put into practice. We could Excel, use Excel to give it to somebody, but usually Excel is not the thing we present with, but might be an intermediary tool that we use to customize our reports and then uh, and then possibly use it also to put all the reports on one page or one report so that once again, we can provide it with one report. And then we have the manage report that we talked about in a prior presentation, which is QuickBooks little internal tool helping us to process the reports. So let's take a look at those internally. If I go to the first tab and I go down to the reports on the left hand side, then we could see that we had the manage reports over here. So this one, we saw in a prior presentation helps us to put all the reports into one nice little light, nice little format so that we could put it on one PDF. That's a lot cleaner. That's a nice tool. It's not a perfect tool, but it's cleaner. It looks nicer than attaching like 10 emails or 10 attachments to one email, right? Uh, no matter what method we use, though, we probably are going to end up customizing some reports is what I would suggest doing for external reports and internal reports, possibly putting them under the category of month end reports, quarter end reports, year end reports, so that you can make that process at the end of those periods, which are usually your busiest time as easy as possible. You might want to number them so that when you print them out, they'll be in some kind of order. So let's do that now. I'm going to right click on this tab up top and duplicate it again so that I can open up another report, which is going to be the summary report. I'm just going to do the same reports we did before, basically, so I'll do them fairly quickly. I'm on the reports left hand side, standard balance sheet. I'm going to open up the summary report and then I'll do my standard customization. I'm going to bring it back to 2023. Oh, one, oh, one, two, three. Oh, hold on a second. 010123 tab, 123123 tab, running it to refreshing it, scrolling up, customizing the report. I want negative numbers bracketed, red, uh, no pennies on the headers and footer. Get rid of the date, time, report basis. Don't need that. Save it. There it is. Hermosa looks good. Let's go ahead and customize or save the customization, memorizing it. Summary balance sheet. That's a good name. I'm going to put a number one in front of it because I want to be able to list my reports in uh, an order. And then I'm also going to add a group and I'm just going to put this as month uh, end or you might say if they were the end of the year, right? Year, year end reports. Add the group. There it is in the drop down. That's the one. Save it. Save it. And then I'll go back to my first tab and the, in the uh, custom reports, refresh the screen and it should show up. Which is what we have a, uh, in the custom area, we have the year end report and now the group. It didn't put the little number one in it. So I'm going to edit it again. Why didn't I said number one, number one, uh, hold on a second and then save it and close it. Okay, so there we have. Now let's do the next one. Let's go to the standard balance sheet. Let's say we're going to do instead of just doing the standard balance sheet, I'll make a vertical analysis one since I have a, a basic balance sheet before. If I just add the vertical, that might be something worth doing. So I'm going to say, uh, let's make a percent of the column and we'll make this one a bit more fancy. And so now we've got the vertical analysis on the right. I might say this is a balance sheet with a vertical analysis. Is there spell check in here? Okay, I'm going to assume that's spelled right. And then I'll copy this name and then I'm going to customize it. Same customization. Get rid of the pennies. 
negative numbers bracketed, red, footers, we want no time, date, report, bases, get out of here, run it. And then I'm gonna save customization. The name's gonna be, that looks good, balance sheet vertical analysis, number two report. And then it's gonna go into our year in reports, saving it. First tab, run into refreshing. Let's see if it puts it where it should go. There should be two in there. It looks now it's in order. MUI B to the N, B N. And then, so now let's do another one with a horizontal analysis, possibly. I'll use this same report and I'll get rid of the percent of column. And then I'm gonna say that instead we want, let's run it. Instead we want, we want let's just do for the end of December. So I'm gonna go from uh, 120123 and then I'm gonna take the previous period, dollar change, percent change, and I'm gonna call this the balance sheet, not vertical, but horizontal, horizontal analysis, because it's going in the horizontal this time. Save it. Let's go ahead and save customization. And I'm just gonna call this now number three, a uh, horizontal is spelled wrong. Horizontal analysis. I'm going to leave it wrong in the report. I apologize if that annoys you, because anybody. Uh, but I'm on number three. This is not the point of the present. Spelling is not the point of the presentation, although we do want to have it spelled nice because that, again, will make the people think that you're not sophisticated when you can't spell. I've been called unsophisticated many a time for my lack of spelling uh, <laughs> and, and other things. But in any case, whatever, uh, well, I'm, I'm trying here. So let's keep it, we've got the three now. So if we have those three, obviously we can go on for some time doing more comparative reports. We can do a report by month and, and so on and so forth. We might do a report by quarter and so on. The point is once we have a large amount of reports, we want, we're going to have them lined up in here. Note also, you're not just going to have the balance sheet accounts. You're going to have income statement accounts as well and possibly other reports that you would want, but you would want variants of the balance sheet and the income statement. And just with the balance sheet and the income statement, you can imagine you can easily get over 10 reports pretty quickly if you start thinking about these comparative type reports. We'll talk about the income statement and possibly other reports in more detail in uh, future presentations. Now that we have it here at the end of each month or at the end of the year, in this case, every year we can just basically generate these reports in order because we numbered them. So how can we generate them? Well, we could use the management report tool or we could export them to Excel and do for further formatting from there and then batch them together in one PDF file or we can save them as a PDF file. So let's do that. I'm gonna close the reports that are currently open and I'm going to imagine that I already have this set up and now it's the end of the year and I'm just going to generate these reports, adjust the date, save them as a PDF file and then provide them to the client either by email, by some kind of OneDrive or something like that, Cloud Drive uh, or, or, or something like that. So let's go in. I'm going to, uh, I, unfortunately, I can't right click on it like I would like to and open it that way. So maybe it would be best to right click and duplicate the tab and then go down to the balance sheet and open up the balance sheet. And so I'm gonna close up this one. And so now I would like to uh, export it as a PDF. So we have a PDF here. Now, I just wanna point out that sometimes you might run into forms that don't have the option to export as a PDF, both in this program and in other programs, it therefore is useful to have a PDF printer of some kind. So I think there's a free one. I'm not promoting them or anything. I'm not affiliated in any way, but I use this cute PDF printer, which I think is still free. Uh, and that means that when you do the printing option, you can print it instead of to a physical printer to a PDF printer. So in other words, this report has the capacity to make a PDF report this way. That's great. but if we run into reports that don't have that option, then if you have a PDF printer, you can use the printing option here 
and then you also have the save as a PDF within here. But if you were to print it, you could then print this to uh, a PDF printer instead of a physical printer. So now it opened it in PDF format. And then I'm going to basically, if you needed to print it, there's my PDF printer right there instead of an actual physical printer. And so that is something that I think is useful to have that tool in the event that you need it. We'll also use that PDF printer tool uh, when we get to uh, the integration of it with Excel. Now note that if we were actually physically printing it, we could go into the printing options here. This also gives you a preview type of page uh, if you needed to adjust it. So in here, we've got the portrait and the landscape. Usually the QuickBooks default files for the default settings are pretty good to fit everything on one page. When we look at financial reports, note that they could be quite tedious in that they might be really wide if you look at certain types of reports, in which case you don't want to have multiple pages wide of a report. You want them, you want every line to fit on the page. So these settings basically help to do that. Uh, no settings are perfect to kind of fix that because they might uh, lower or lessen the size of the font, for example. So if you go from one report to the other, you've got different font sizes, which is kind of ugly, but it's not as bad as basically having reports that don't have, like if I had the descriptions over here and the numbers were on the second page, that would be really bad, right? You don't want that. So usually the default settings are picking it up right now. Right now, as you can see, it's on por on portrait. That makes sense because it fits on portrait. We can make it landscape. So if it was a very long report, then in, in width, we can change it to landscape and that would be good. And then we have the smart page fit. I'm going to put it back on portrait. Smart page fit uh, will help you help it to basically fit on one page. And once again, the way it does that possibly is possibly changing the font size and whatnot to get it on one page wide is what we're generally looking for. If it's two pages long, I'm not really concerned with that generally. I just want it not to be two pages wide. And then we got the repeat page header. That means the header on top will, will repeat again on the second page. Then you've got the close, you've got the email. So you could send it by email from here. You could save it as a PDF. So this will be a little bit two steps instead of just going straight to the PDF. But if you go here, you have the capacity to do these little changes over here, uh, similar to the printing settings, and then you can print it. And when you print it, it opens it up basically as a PDF. And at that time, once again, you can print it or download it from uh, this section. So I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to close this back out. So I also, if you hit the drop down and just export it to a PDF, then it'll go directly uh, to the PDF. Well, it's basically the same thing. It takes you to the same basically page and then we can uh, save it as a PDF again. So I can save it as a PDF and it goes to my downloads. And typically that's downloads in Google now. And what I'm going to do is drag it into my folder. So here's my folder. I put it into QuickBooks online. And on the desktop, opening that up, I'm going to put it into QuickBooks Navigation because that's kind of the part, the part of the course or the course that we're looking at. And then I'm just going to open that back up again and say, pull that in, pull it in, drag it in, get over here. And then I'm going to hit the drop down and extra large. So there's our balance sheet uh, summary. I still want to name it with a number one. So I'm going to right click rename. I want the number one in front of it because I want them to be in order by number, not by alphabetical order, even within my folder here, because that'll make it easier for me to group them once they're here. So I'm going to close that out. Let's, let's go back to the first tab. I'm going to duplicate it again, duplicate the tab, drag it to the right. This will be the second report that we want. Let's open up the vertical analysis. And then I, I would just need to change the range, but it's already good because we're in the same period at this time. And then I have my options of sending it out. Let's go ahead and export to a PDF again. And then if I save as a PDF, it'll do the download. And then I'm just going to drag it into my folder, going to drag it into my folder. Boom. And then we'll change the name on that one. I'm going to right click and put a two in front of it 
and say this is going to be number two, do, 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 renamed. And so it's in the order that I want. Let's do it again, ultra vez, another time, one more time, back to the tab, to the left, right click, duplicate the tab, dragging it to the right, opening up the three, the balance sheet, and we don't need to change the range, horizontal analysis, let's hit the drop down. Boom, don't hit it too hard though, don't break it. Don't break it. Export to a PDF, and then we're gonna go ahead and save it or save to PDF. And let's put that in our folder as well, dragging it into the folder. And so now we have them in our folder. So there's only three reports. Let's go ahead and rename this one so I can put a three next to it. And so now they're in order that I want them to be in because I've numbered them. So even if I was to attach them to an email at this point in time, I can at least attach them in an ordered way so that they can see which ones I think should be open first, second, third, and so on and so forth. But normally if I give it to an email, someone as an email, uh, there might be more than three reports. So it would be nice if I zipped the reports at least. So that would be one method. Another method we can do is put it on our trusty cloud drive, Google Cloud, OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive Cloud, Dropbox or something like that, as long as it's, of course, a secure uh, location that you can share with them, then that's another useful tool. I would still want to use the numbering system possibly so that they can open each file uh, individually and, and see them kind of in the order of presentation that you might want to put them in. Uh, if I was to give it to someone by email, I would want to zip them possibly so that I can put them into one file that they can download on an email instead of downloading 10 files, or in this case, three files. So I might have another folder and call it like year and reports, reports, hopefully I spelled that right. I'm going to grab these and drag them in there. So this folder, I cannot generally attach to an email. But if I zip it, I usually can. So if I right click on it, and, uh, and I send it to a zip, uh, uh, compressed to a zip file. So your zip file might look different, it might just have a zipper on it. But the, the point is that now once it's in that file, you can usually attach it once it's zipped and compressed to an email. So when I go into an email and look for that file, it will find it. When I go into an email and look for this folder, it won't allow me to attach the folder, but will al only allow me to go into the folder and then pick up the reports that are inside of that folder. So that's the, that's the second method that we could use to give it to someone. We have them now, we can give them the documents physically, we can print them, we can provide them on a cloud drive and have the reports neatly filed within that cloud drive so they can open up whichever they one they want, but put them in order. We can zip it possibly so we can attach it to an email or whatever other electronic device we're using to send it as long as it is secure. But the other two methods that we, we looked at over here was that we can use the same method of numbering the reports to put those reports into the manage reports tool, which will basically put them all in one PDF file and give a little intro page and, an, and, an, and a closing page. Uh, we looked at that before. And the next thing we could do is we could export these reports, same process, we make the reports, but then we export them to Excel. And if we export them to Excel, we can actually use the cute PDF printer or whatever PDF printer you want to take all of the tabs. If we put them all in tabs in Excel, we can print all of the tabs at one time. That has some advantages. One, you can put them all on one PDF file, which you can also do with this tool. But two, with Excel, you can also do more editing. So if you wanna do a little bit more editing on the reports, possibly just a little, some little touches that would be easy, like changing the font uh, on the titles or something, or changing some colors that you want on the title or in the reports, uh, then you can just do a little bit more uh, touching up on Excel, you have to do it every time you export. It can't save the exporting in Excel generally, but that might be worth doing. So we'll see that method in a future presentation.